Okay, we're still in chapter 3. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take ionic compounds and split them up into their individual ions. We're going to look at an ionic compound and we're going to say what is the cation and what is the anion. So what do we have to remember here when we start to do these problems? Always remember that ions have charges. So when you write an individual ion formula, you have to show the charges on it. After all, Na is a whole lot different than Na plus 1. Very big difference in what is that and what is that. You sprinkle this in your mouth and it tastes like salt. You sprinkle this in your mouth and very, very bad reactions happen. That doesn't even look like that. That's a shiny metal and this is that white crystalline solid that you recognize as sodium chloride or salt. Okay. And remember, that's an ionic compound and it doesn't show the charges. But that doesn't mean they're not there. You just don't show them whenever it's a compound. But you have to show them when it's an individual ion. Really important. Second point, every ionic compound has one type of cation combined with one type of anion. Cation always comes first. So, once you identify the cation, the rest has to be the anion. Okay? So, how do we go about this business to try to figure these out? Well, it's good to be able to identify the group A ions first because you can tell exactly what they are. It's also really good if you have a polyatomic ion, if you memorized all the bolded polyatomic ions on page 58 because that allows you to determine those charges as well because all you need is one charge and you can get the other one simply because the total charge of every ionic compound is zero. Alright, so the way the question will be asked is identify the cation and the anion in the following ionic compounds. Let me move this up. There they are. Write them down. See if you can tell me which the cation is, which the anion is after hitting pause and working it through. Then we'll come back and see how I do it. Hopefully you did it the same way. Alright, hit pause. Okay, you're back. Alright, so clearly this is the cation, this is the anion. Can you identify what they are based on their places on the periodic table? Well, sure you can. If you look at where sodium is, it's in group 1A. So therefore it likes to make a plus 1. There's the cation. It's a plus 1. That's the anion. That's in group 7A. So it likes to add one more electron to make a minus 1. And that's the anion. And that's all there is to that one. The cation is the sodium plus 1. The anion is the fluoride minus 1. And those are the formulas of each. You have to write down the charges. Okay, let's try B. Calcium is from group 2A, so it likes to make a plus 2, right? That's the cation. This is the anion side. But what does that 2 mean? It doesn't mean that the chlorine and the chlorine are attached. That means there are two chloride ions. It's up to you to know what the charge is. Well, as long as that's a group A element, it's easy to tell. 7A. That means 7 electrons in the outer shell. Wants to add 1 to form a Cl minus 1. The cation, calcium, we already figured out, makes a plus 2. You have to make sure that these add up to 0, right? Well, 2 chlorines, 2 chlorides, which are each minus 1, is minus 2. 1 calcium is a plus 2, it adds up to 0. So that takes care of that. Alright. C is where we start to maybe run into things that are a little bit more involved. 
I need you to understand that this is the cation side. Okay, because the cation always comes first. And so therefore the rest of this is the anion side. You have to be ready to identify a polyatomic ion. Okay, what is not true is there are not K, S, and O ions. That is not true because, remember, we need one type of cation and one type of anion. So when you look at this, I want you to see two K ions and one SO4 ion. And then it's up to you to figure out what those charges are. You know that the cation is a K. What does that little two mean? It just means two of them. Right? So what's the charge on a potassium? Well, it's group 1A, right? So the potassium likes to make a plus one, and that's the cation. So the rest of this, the SO4, all together, is the anion. So what's the charge on it? Well, if you have two K plus ones, what charge has to be on the SO4 to even out that total? Well, it has to be a minus two. So either you could know that by knowing how to figure out the group A element and add up the total on the cation side, or you memorized the sulfate ion from page 58 as minus two. So, in this ionic compound, we have two K plus ones and one SO4 minus two. Nobody's asking you to tell me how many, but that's a little extra information. Your job is to say that cations are K plus ones and the anion is SO4 minus two. Okay, let's try this one. Let's say you just don't remember what the nitrate is. Can't remember if it's a minus two or a minus one or a minus three. Just can't remember. Maybe you even thought it might be a plus. Well, it can't be a plus, right? Because this is the cation side. And so the rest has to be the anion side. So if the cation side is AL, you'd better know that that's a plus three by now for all those times that you went and looked on the periodic table and looked up group three elements and what charges they make. So the anion. Hmm. Notice that within the parentheses is the entire polyatomic ion. So the NO3 is the total of all the elements that are attached to each other to make the polyatomic ion. What does that little three? That tells you how many of these. If there's three of them, okay, if we look at this and we say there's an AL and it's a plus three, that means we've got three of the NOOOs, right? Those are the nitrate ions. If this adds up to plus three here, this has to add up to minus three to get it to even out to be a zero charge. The only way that can be is if each of these is a minus one charge. With me? Hope so. Let's move on. Okay, we look here and we say, hmm, there's Fe. Fe. Is that a group A element? Well, let's look. Fe is right here, right smack dab in the middle of the transition metal. So we don't know what the charge is on that. Uh-oh. Well, then how do we do this problem? Since that's the cation, but we don't know automatically what the charge is because it's not a group A element, we have to think about it in terms of the anion. And if you don't know what the charge is on an OH, well, you're in big trouble. Because you have to know, based on memorizing the bolded ions from page 58, hopefully you remember that OH is a minus one. So if we've got one Fe, and two 
OH minus ones. Right. What's the charge have to be on that FE? Well, it can only be one thing for the total charge to be zero, and that's a plus two. So you've got one Fe plus two cation plus two OH minus one anions to make this compound that's a zero charge. All right, one more to go. Hmm. It's Fe again, which means that is the cation side, and that's the anion side. But whenever you see this, I want you to think two Fe's and three O's. Now, what are the charge on those Fe's? Well, you don't know, because remember, transition metals can be any charge. But the O, well, you know what that one is, right? Oxygen is a group 6A. So it's the anion, and all group 6As like to add two more electrons to end up with a minus 2 charge. So if each of these guys is a minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, what's that total charge add up to? Minus 6, right? On the anion side, that's a total of minus 6. For it to be a zero charge, we would have, have, have to add up to a total of plus 6. So if you have two FEs, and they have to add up to plus 6, what's the charge on each of them? It's got to be a plus 3 and a plus 3, right? Because that adds up to plus 6. So each of these irons has to be a plus 3. You can check your work. Two FEs adds up to plus 6. Three O minus 2s adds up to minus 6. Notice that the iron in this compound was a plus 2 the iron in this compound was a plus three. So that's why those transition metals can make anything. This is a tough job. Make sure you know how to do this. If you can, you're really going to have a head start on lots of things in chemistry, both 110A, 110B, and 115, and 116. It's a big deal. So pound at it. Good luck.